it's not that I'm done talking about the Supreme Court overturning Roe versus Wade. It's not remotely that. I have a sneaking suspicion I'll be talking about that for the rest of my goddamn life. But it's not the only thing that's going on in terms of theocratic misogyny. So we have to talk about some other shit, too. So let's start in Afghanistan, shall we? It was clear for years that the people who stood to lose the most from the U.S. withdrawal were the nation's women. They were pretty much immediately ousted from any conceivable position of power when the Taliban retook the national government, but nobody had any illusions that it would end there. And we were reminded of that last Saturday when they issued a new proclamation that forced women back into the all-encompassing burqas they'd so recently escaped. According to the proclamation, only a woman's eyes can be showing in public. No more tempting, innocent Muslim men with lascivious cheekbones and salacious foreheads. There might be at least a semblance of good news here, though. It looks like this edict, along with one a few months ago, barring girls from attending school beyond the sixth grade, might be causing an internal rift within the ruling party. It's not like there's a wing of the Taliban that is sympathetic to women's rights or anything, but there is a wing that wants Western aid more than they want to oppress half the population. And after 20 years of relative freedom during the war, there's a very real possibility that any fracture within the Taliban could cause the whole thing to come crashing down and a more moderate government to grow in its place. And while that might seem hopelessly optimistic, it's at least a real enough possibility that the Taliban are worried about it. Of course, if the Taliban does fall from power, it's probably only a matter of time before we overtake them in the theocratic misogyny standings. And as if to remind the world what American women have to look forward to if the batshit Christians manage to consolidate power, we were treated to a story this week about a student at a Christian music college in Tennessee who apparently was punished for having premarital sex after she reported being raped. At least that's the claim in the complaint she filed with the U.S. Department of Education a couple weeks ago. Now, to be clear, the premarital sex in question wasn't the rape. The school is accusing her of having had sex with her ex-boyfriend, which she denies. And apparently they threatened to expel her if she didn't sign a confession admitting to the charge. As it stands, they're allowing her to finish her degree remotely. But they also refuse to remove the alleged rapist from her classes, refused to conduct a Title IX investigation, and tried to bar her from telling anyone else about the rape. So it might not be exactly the story that you thought it was when you first heard it, but it's at least exactly as bad. So yeah, it was nice when I needed more in the way of transitional material to move from stories about the Taliban to stories from the U.S., but that's not the world we live in anymore. So if nothing else, I'm sure I'll have plenty to talk about next time. But until then, I'll hand you back over to Noah, Heath, and Eli.